Right, so, new grab. This is a, uh, just a standard squeeze grab from Cherry. And uh, just a little quick look around it. What do we think of it? It looks well made. We're gonna give it a quick, uh, well, we'll be using it all morning to unload these bales. Um, but yeah, that's us. She's brand new. She came, she only came yesterday. Christ, wind. Yard is so dusty. Right, got these clips here. You undo the bolts, flip these back, and inside here is spikes. So it's a two in one. You got the uh, squeeze, and then you got the spikes as well for picking up big bales. Uh, we don't usually use them for big bales, we mainly just use them for squeeze. But you've got that option if you get stuck and uh, the squeeze, uh, the spikes are elsewhere. But yeah, she looks a nice machine. We'll give her a quick going over and uh, see how she does. The other one, um, we've got two squeezes, we've got an Albert one and we got a... Uh, can't. I can't remember who the other ones. We've got a red one. But the red one, where the ram goes in and out, it keeps bending the ram. Uh, farmer had had enough of it, so he's bought a cherry one, and we'll see how this one lasts. <laughs> Summer's gone, I'm latching on Don't even know your name But you're still in my head Underneath rays of gold Your body all so close No, I can't forget, no So, young Andrew's come to help us We're just putting these last few bales together Just getting them set Andrew's got the, uh, the Albert squeezes on I was using those all day yesterday. And uh, compared to these, they're both very good. The Albert ones are a little bit different actually. They, they, the hangers hang lower. And they do, if I'm honest, they make it, if you look at them from there, they hang a bit lower. And you've just got better line of sight on your blind side when you're unloading. And that is the only perk are the Albert ones over these and it's not really a perk is it it's, uh, it's just the way they are but I like these as well they're nice and easy to use they're nice and chunky so they're gonna last a long time and uh, yeah once we've uh, done a field we'll, when we've gone and picked some up out of the field we'll uh, be able to say what they're like out in the field as well first impressions pretty good We've got a few more to do yet, so we'll let you know how we get on with those because uh, it's a new product and uh, I don't know what the other ones were. I don't know if they were cherry as well. I don't think they were. I think they were something else. But yeah, very good. Apart from they don't hang very low. If that, if these carriers hanged a bit lower, it would just be easier to un, you know, unload trailers on your blind side. But apart from that, uh, they're pretty good. Nothing wrong with those, we like those. This is our new road grader. Where had the other one worn out? The bottoms, mate, where they were on the road. So, the old one was what, 10 years old did you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 years old, and it wears down the bottom here, does yeah, it? Yeah, it just wears where it touches the plane ends, where it touches the road. So Peter's put a new bottom on for us and the farmer's just um, putting the last welds on there. Pete's day off. Pete, yeah, Pete's, Pete, Pete's on a day off, so farmer's finishing it off. <clears throat> but that should go another 10 years for us. They're pretty handy, especially for uh, tarmac roads, stuff like that. Fits on the front linkage of the tractor and yeah. Farmer's welding it. it, should be me welding, shouldn't it? I should be learning, but 
We'll let the farmer do it because it's quite important. That wouldn't be a bad Ooh. wild mate. That's nice, that's well, nice. Yeah, well, you knock the flux off for that. Oh. And what's that on top? What, what is that crusty bit? That's the flux. That's what makes the wild run. Oh. Actually, you can take a picture of that wild because that is a good one. You like that one? Oh, yeah, I like that one. You can, <laughs> I'll allow you to picture that one. <laughs> When I saw you on the dance floor Oh, I saw you, who's on me first I guess it's history now and I shouldn't care, but it still hurts I didn't realize the danger Cause you're the end of the rainbow And the music was so loud You didn't catch your name of the dance crowd Girl, you should wear a name We've got a bit of silage done We're gonna give you a quick farm update Cows and calves have gone out They are out with the herd now, so uh, There's no cows in the yard Just been sorting the yard out there's been crazy holes from the winter we've had um, where the water so much water has been in the yard it's just made crazy um, potholes so Darren and the farmer are going to be filling in the holes Peter's finished servicing the baler so we're going to have a quick look at that and I'm going Ted in because we are going to actually try and make some hay this week we got a good week of weather and we got some grass down and if it doesn't make hay, we'll make silage out of it. So we're going to see what it does. It's a little bit early for grass because the grass is still young. Uh, but we are going to try and make some hay. Listen to that tractor. They just sound the... They sound the business, don't they? This is the grader. Uh, the old one was just worn around the bottom. So Peter's actually cut some big steels welded them on there and basically we just drop the uh drop the planings down and push over it with the tractor push this will drop to the floor push over it smooth out all the uh potholes and there are a few potholes in the yard so it's one of doing for a few weeks now and we're finally getting around to it we are going on the tether again we're literally going to the furthest field away that we got so we've got a pr got a bit of a drive up there we got our uh, 6270 on the baler. Got an issue with the 6270. One of the spools is leaking, so uh, we actually have a spare spool. We're just going to see. Where is it leaking from? It's leaking. Putting a new, another coupler on like that. Yeah, where is it leaking out of here though? It's uh, internal, that little tit inside there. Oh, the nipple inside? Yeah, leaking out there. You do not want a leaky nipple, man. And uh, this is a spare one, is it? Just That's just a spare one we had kicking about. We're hoping it'll cure the problem. But they're quite expensive if they're not. Yeah. If that won't work. Yeah. You want that? You got the spanner on there. But you don't want it leaking all the time because it just leaks all over the back of the tractor and makes an horrible right, mess. And uh, every time you go to use a trailer or whatever, you, you haven't got any back end oil. It's just a nightmare. So it wants fixing. I can't do it while you're watching. Is that why? Is that why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Farmers put a uh, farmers put a new. Is this a coupling? Is it? Yes. And the other one was uh, the other one was leaking quite bad. There was, well, you can see down there. That's how bad it was leaking. It only been sat there an hour, so uh, it was leaking quite bad. This is our John Deere. What is it? Four five nine conventional baler. Peter, how does it work? goes in there. So we, we'll row it all into a row, won't we? Get scooped up into here. The auger carries it across. This will turn this way and it will scoop all the hay into the chamber over then that way. This packer finger then goes down and scoops it into the chamber. Yeah. The plunger which is in here goes yeah. backwards and forwards. So that pushes the bale that way. Pushes it out the back of the baler. And right so it, every year has to be serviced doesn't it yeah so guy comes from lister his name's mark he's a really good old boy and knows his stuff around john deere's and he knows his stuff about everything really um what did it have to have this time because even after the even after when you buy this machine brand new after the first season you've got to spend a lot of money to keep them right and yeah you? he came in the winter checks it over and see which parts are worn what it needs then he gives you an estimate of what 
prices or on what parts you need and what the label's going to cost. Yeah. Then you decide whether to fix it or not. Right, so what so, did we have to have done this time then, Pete? These are plunger rails. So the plunger inside the baler goes backwards and forwards. Yeah. Runs on bearings on these rails. Mm -hmm. These are both worn. He's changed those. He's changed all the bearings on the plunger. Yeah. Um, a few other. There was some new packer fingers on here because they were bent. They were bent. Right? Yeah. Oh, what oh. makes them bend? Uh, Just something called Matthew usually. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got a problem with the lubricator on the knotters. It's got a leak on one of these pipes, so we just got to get joiner to fix that. Okay. Um, just general service and adjustment, really. Yeah. Um, that's where the bell comes out of. Yeah. What's in here? Can we have a look at all the bits in here? Because you had all this uh, apart, didn't you? Uh, take all the slip cards apart. Yeah. What, is, apart, what does that all do then, Pete? That's just a safety device. I mean, there's a slip clutch, it just slips. If there's a, a blockage or something seizes up, it slips on the slip clutch so you don't do so much damage. Right, and what's this big wheel do? That's a flywheel. And that, that gives your plunger a bit of momentum to cut the hay when it goes backwards. The weight of the flywheel Carries gives the, the inertia and uh, helps it to cut the hay. Oh, right. Because once the plunger gets back to this point, it has to cut the hay and pack it into the bale all at the same time. Right. And that gives you the bit of inertia to help it on its way. And what's inside here? These are just the gears and the chains that time all these bits and bolts. And everything and has knotted. to be timed together, doesn't it? Everything has to be timed so that the needles come into the chamber as the plunger's going away. Because if it all gets wrong, the plunger comes back and smashes the needles. And this has to be timed right as well, because you don't want that hitting the plunger either, do no, you? No, everything has to be timed. That's what all these blue marks are. So it's like a cam belt for a car? Yeah, a bit like that. You see these blue marks? Yeah. They're the timing marks on the cog, they all have to be in the right place when it goes back together. Cool. Um, is it all set right now, just apart from that little leak on that? That's all done apart from that leak. Do you want me to fire it up? Yeah, we can have yeah, definitely. Peter's going to turn it on for us so we can have a look. <clears throat> I've never used this machine. Uh, it's usually uh, young Andrew's job and he will maintain this machine and use it over the summer and make the bales. Uh, hopefully, I'll, I might get a go this season. You don't you'll see what the farmer said, but you really need to know what you're doing. So, Machine, isn't it? It's for, complicated, yeah. For what it is, for what it makes, it's, uh, it's, it's, and it, it's an expensive machine to upkeep as well. Every year you have to spend two to three thousand on it, don't you? Yeah, roughly about that. Just to keep the thing running for the next season. So, but is this one a good one compared to previous ones we've had? No, they, the field quality is not as good as they used to. This must be the third or fourth John Deere bay, though. Yeah. And previous the ones. The quality is not as good as it used to be. No. We actually, uh, Colin, the farmer's cousin, actually has one of our previous ones. And the farmer still swears by that machine, doesn't he? He still says that yeah. machine is better than this newer machine. And Mark, uh, Mark the bailer man that was looking, doing the work, he agreed. He said they, they're not made as well as they used to be. No. So, yeah. Unfortunately, they've gone downhill on. Um, how they're made. I don't, I don't think the steel's as good as it used to be. No, Se what, steel, steel strength? Steel strength's not as good as it used to be, I don't think. Hmm. Anyway, that is our John Deere baler. You'll see lots of that. Uh, it'll be out in the field. And we're actually, uh, we're gonna try and make some hay this week. And it may, end, uh, it may be in a video pretty soon. So keep your eye out for that one. Look how smooth the yard is. 
Oh, it's going to be so nice driving around on a smooth yard. I've got to get my camera down now. Right, so we've got the tether on. We are on uh, the 7718. This one does have the GPS and we are going to actually have a chance to use it. Uh, the fields we're going in aren't massive so I mean you can get all right, you get by without it anyway. We don't really uh, need GPS at all. Uh, we're just going to watch these bikes here because they're out on their bike ride. Uh, but this tether, even on this big tractor, it's still a bit lively on the... Uh, if you get it starts getting a swing on and uh, you can't sort of stop it it's uh, you can't be uh, bombing around our old class would sit right tight against the tractor and you you didn't know it was there but this one sits further back and a lot taller and it does upset the balance of the tractor especially on the road um, we went up telling yesterday and um, I noticed it then so it's not a uh, you don't want to be going down the road too fast with it and it's actually quite wide as well on the road so you've got to be careful you've got to be careful with the trees you've got to be careful with things on this side and yeah but it's fine it, uh, you just take it a bit steadier you drive accordingly out the front of the farm where we did the silage uh, we went out and fertilized that and we are hoping we'll get another cut off that so um, Come July time, end of July, maybe into August, we're hoping we might have another cut of silage off that. Uh, we'll see how that pans out because it is still dry, and uh, but the rain's going to come at some point, and it's uh, most likely going to come when you want to start haymaking. It's funny, it's uh, when you're driving on these small roads, people don't quite understand what it's like, especially when you've got a machine like this in. You hit the ruts and uh, they, they sort of think you can just drive quickly in the verge and you can't. You, they, they don't quite understand. They see you in a tractor and automatically think, oh he's got big tyres, he'll be fine. But uh, yeah, for those who uh, don't know what it's like to drive a tractor, if you ever see one out on the country lanes, and he's got a full load of hay or a full load or a, a big machine on the back you you've got to really be careful passing him and coming towards him because you, once we get when the tractors get into a rut it's it, it very easily throws your front steering off and you can find yourself oh that's a nice man you can find yourself in the other side of the road very quickly and it's uh yes yeah, it's, it's a lot more tricky than it looks from the outside. From the outside you're just saying, oh he's in a tractor, he can go on that rough bit. But it's insanely bumpy. It throws you around all inside the cab and you've got to try and keep that straight. Yeah, so uh, just bear that in mind when you're uh, you're out and about and you're following a tractor. Just, uh, just remember like We'll always try and pull over for you. If we find a nice wide bit, we'll pull over for you. It's, uh, it's no issues. Well, that's what I do anyway, and most of the others do that as well. But uh, it can get very tricky, um, especially when we've got big trailers on. There's really nowhere for us to stop. So, yeah, just take it easy when you're going past tractors. And uh, it's... Well, the, the tractor, a wheel on a tractor is crazy money. So if you run a, if you run up the curb on one of these wheels and slice into the tire, and because they're so, the tires are super heavy. They are very durable. Yes, they are. But when you run them along a the side of curb, you can actually, uh, it's like running up the side of a knife, and you can damage the tire very, very easily. So if you're wondering why, oh, this man's being very kind. If you're wondering why we don't run alongside the ruts, it's because it's super. It's well, you can see it now. Like I'm only doing 30k, and it is. You don't want to go any faster. So uh, always be wary of the tractors on the road, and uh, most cases, the, uh, the, the we did, usually most of us ain't got far to go. So just be patient. Just let us uh, try and find a spot to move over for you. 
I had a crazy lunatic in a uh, BMW the other day. I'm just going to let this van pass. And he was only set on getting past me. I had another car behind me. The guy, the guy behind me could see that there was just nowhere for me to pull over. We're going through a village. I've got walls this side. I've got the topper on. The guy behind me was sat back. He was, he, he could see we weren't, you know, he, he could see what was going on. But there was a BMW guy behind him, and Christ, he was, he managed to force his way past the first car, and uh, well, I weren't going to let him pass us. It was too dangerous. So, uh, but he was giving us the finger, and uh, we don't need that. We're, we're literally on the road. We're like. Depending on where we're going, most of the places are around the farm. I mean, you're not you're not on the road very long. We're in the fields, so when we are on the road, we're usually going somewhere local. We're not going far in a big tractor like this that only does 30 miles an hour. So, uh, way up. See what I mean? It's a bit wobbly. Way up. You've got to take it steady. But yeah, um, like now, I've got nowhere to pull over for this guy, so he's going to have to be patient. And this is a thin bit of road. So I'm not going to give him any opportunity to come past. But once we get on a wide bit, I'll let him pass. There's no issues. There's no point making it dangerous. We get people passing us on a blind bend. It's madness. Anyway, that's my rant about the road. Let's see who we Oh, I'll try not to get in the hedge. I can't even turn the camera off. Because I've got bikes, cars. Right, so we're on our second pass and you can see what the machine... Right, let's stand in the crop that hasn't been done. So if you look down, you can see where the machine's been and where it hasn't been. So it'll fluff it all up and it lets the sun get right into it, bake it all up. And while we're off the tractor, we'll see what sort of job we're doing. I'm just checking how close these times are. They're a little bit. Okay, they can do with picking up slightly. Good to uh, make sure you check your job. You haven't digging into uh, much and you will lose the time. I'll just check this side. See, that's about right there, but that will be, we'll be on a, yeah, we've got to pick her up. A, bit uneven surface so some are off the ground some aren't so we're going to pick it up a little bit and uh, so we're just going to use this wheel here and you will see the arms just come up a little bit that's all it needs Just shut my PTO off because I'm out of the seat. I was leaning out the window. So, yep, that's good adjustments. Uh, we'll do second time round. Uh, and then when we set the GPS up, we'll have a look at that. <clears throat> right, <clears throat> so, not really necessary because this field really isn't big enough to warrant GPS. I can see it perfectly. Uh, but while we got it, we'll show you what it's all about. We set up our implement, uh, so this GPS is only very basic, so um, it'll, uh, it will weave very slightly. Um, you do get different types of GPS, you get RTK which will only, it, it will only, um, it'll only overlap by two centimeters, something like that, but you have to pay subscription, you have to, um, you have to pay for a different dome on top and it's, it can be quite expensive. Uh, but this one is on a free version uh, the dome came with a tractor and um, yeah you don't have to pay for it but it does mean you won't get a very true set and you only need that real true set for when you're planting um, when you're planting and you know things like that but for tedding we need a nice little overlap anyway so 
what we've done is set the implement up. You tell, you tell the tractor how wide you want the uh, your pass to be. So I've done all that. I've set it at 8.5. So we'll have an overlap of about 30 centimeters, uh, and that will give us that will. Um, if we do vary any, uh, if we do go off track any, we ain't gonna go. We're not gonna miss any. Uh, so next thing to do is set your AB line. Now your AB line is which way you want your tractor to go. So you start here, this is your A, and you end up at your B line. So all you do is, we're going to do that now, set way line, yes. Ah, here we go. Right, now you can, you can set heading, you can set it to, I mean you can set this thing to do loads of different things, but we want just a simple AB line and we've started off at the start here, we're heading up straight up the field, got ourselves in the right place, I'm going to hit the A button and when we get to the end, we'll hit the B button. Now you can do this after, um, I mean I can hit the B button now. And then hit auto steer. Now that should put us on a line. Now the tractor steering. Once uh, once you your AB line basically points you whichever way and that'll keep you horizontal to that line every time. We'll just see how she does here. And basically we just, all we do, take control, turn the steering at the headland. And there's just a simple button on here to engage it again. The tractor will take over. We're just going to see where our overlap is. That is spot on. <laughs> Actually, spot on right there. And now I can sit back, fly my drone, whatever, you know. Now these GPSs, we we don't really need it on our farm, but all tractors are coming with it these days. Uh, but it does make jobs like this very very simple. Because now all I've got to do, make sure we're not missing any. Make sure we're not overlapping too much. Make sure we're not digging in. And you get to watch your machine instead of trying to keep a straight line, trying to keep an eye on where you're going. And you're guaranteed not to miss any either because you're always going to be straight. I'm just going to take over. Turn on the headland. That fine. Right, we've got something chasing us up the field. I've got to check that out. I think we've snagged something. Let's go and have a look. Look at that. That is something you do not want wrapped around your tether. That was lucky, it was just wrapped around the. Um, the uh, carrier of the wheel. That could have been a nightmare. Once that gets caught in the in the turning spindles, that could have been just a pain. It just wraps up and ties in a knot quicker than you can even think about it. See? And it can happen as quick as that. That literally Look behind one second, look behind again, we've got a little bit of um, a ball of hay following us I noticed. Thought what was that? That is not what you want. It's always an adventure.
Right, ah, just had a mental hay nado come through. Uh, I've just found a load more of this. I've uh, got some wrapped actually up and in the rotor bearing, so we're gonna have to bear with me and try and get it out. Well, that is a pain. That is the last stuff you want round, wrapped round your tether. I don't know where it's come from, but it's come out of that field there. I only just noticed that as well. First time wasn't so bad, it was caught around the wheels, but that that was caught right around the uh, the hat of the, uh, the spindle there. So that was a bit more of a ch well, I got it off, but just... Uh, yeah, not what you want. It didn't damage nothing. Caught it early. But this is why you got to be. <laughs> it's so easy to suck things up like that. You got to be. Uh, you got to be on top of it. Uh, just lucky there, because uh, if that would have got wrapped up round two of them, that could have bent. Oh, it could have. It could have been a pain. It's always the same. It's always when you get something new, something like that happens. But it's all right. Nothing damaged. We'll keep cracking on. Just to make sure there's no funny noises. No, it seems all right. Right, let's crack on. Right, well that, we're going to put our lights on because there's little marker lights, I don't know if you can see them, on each, uh, on each end of the tattoo, just lets traffic know that you're a bit wider. We will catch you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching as always. And uh, let's hope for no more wire, shall we?